today I want to try and make air crete using an old trailer tire instead of an air compressor. Kumusta, marhaba, and onion hasayo. Hey, it's time from Green Shorts. And you may have seen Franken foam, the making of Franken foam, my air crete foam generator, DIY, easy to make. What makes this work is compressed air. And the cheapest, decent air compressor is about 150 bucks. Those little pancake ones you can get on Amazon. But I've been curious to see if the air pressure in an old trailer tire might be enough to power this air crete foam generator. I salvaged several of these old trailer tires at a recycling event several years ago and my plan was to take the tires off, replace them with new ones and use the rims for a trailer. However, they've just kind of sat around because I haven't gotten to that project. This thing is beyond bald, out of balance, and certainly at end of life. However, it's still holding pressure. So I got some parts on Amazon that will allow me to connect this air pressure valve with the air pressure valve on Franken foam. And I'm optimistic that there's enough pressure in here to make at least one batch of air crete. It's a standard Schrader valve. So I'm going to start by removing the air hose connection here, which has got a quarter inch MPT connection there. And I'm going to replace that with this Schrader to Schrader connection a quarter inch MPT and then an adapter to go from quarter inch MPT back to Schrader. Of course it'll go this way with this end connecting to the tire. And I'll seal this connection and the connection here with some Teflon tape. And then the last connection here is my Schrader male to Schrader female. Not going to Teflon tape this because that's airtight. I think. We'll see. I can always come back and Teflon those later if I need to. Alright, so Franken foam has its new connection. Before I mix up the foam solution. I'm going to do a quick test for air tightness. Having this closed is essential so I don't start blowing air through this. I'm going to open this valve quickly and see if I get airflow. I do. To make my foaming agent, I use 7th generation dish soap. It is sustainable. <laughs> but more importantly, it has glycerin in it. I found that a dish detergent with glycerin in it holds the bubbles better. And my ratio of that is, I do one ounce of the dish soap to two cups of water. And I find using bottled water produces better, actually no, I'm just kidding. I actually found this bottle of water as I was picking up litter on the side of the road. Wasn't gonna drink it but uh, be perfect to make some air creep. Go a little bit over the two cup mark there to get my full two cups of water since I already had an ounce of dish soap. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute or two to kind of mix. And now I'm gonna add it to Franken foam. I opened this by hand this morning but I must have over tightened it when I put it on. So I'm going to use some channel locks here. I've got a couple loops of Teflon tape on this thread as well to help it seal when it's under pressure.
All right, the big reveal. That's nice and rich. I'm actually thinking this is gonna work. All right, I'm gonna stop this, save that pressure. It's pretty good. It's tight bubbles. And actually, what, one of the challenges I had with the, the air compressor is that it had so much pressure that it just blasted a whole bunch out right away in more liquid form. So having lower pressure might be actually an advantage as well. You can see here after about probably 10 minutes, the foam is starting to break down a little bit. Of course, it's also exposed to the air, which kind of helps with that process or speeds up that process. I will get my forms ready and then make a new batch of foam. I used up a good bit of the pressure in my tire, so I'm gonna pump it back up with my bike pump. This will also give me a pressure reading. Starting out zero. Whew. That was a workout, but I need a workout. I'm gonna stop here at about 30 pounds of pressure. This tire is actually rated for a max of 51 pounds of pressure, so if I need more, I can always dial it up, but this may be enough. Before I prepare some more foam, I'm going to mix up my cement slurry, which is gonna be comprised of Portland cement. Usually I've made my air crate with just Portland and foam, but I had a comment that said that adding sand might make it stronger, so I'm gonna give that a try. Do a one-to-one -one ratio of Portland to sand. And this is construction sand, so I'm gonna screen it. Now I'm gonna mix these two ingredients dry. I like this a little more wet than that I would mix a bag of quick read up. You need to be able to fluff this up with the foam. So this is a good consistency. It needs to be able to spin as you'll see in a minute. I like to go for a ratio of one part cement to two parts foam. But I'm really looking for a particular consistency which is kind of like a cake batter. Switch buckets and make some foam. This is pretty airy. I may not have made enough cement, but.
but it's evenly distributed so let's pour it in I filled the canister with sand to keep it weighed down Right now, the enemy of this air creep is air. I need to get this top surface protected with some plastic to keep those bubbles from bursting too soon. Of course, I should have had this prepared ahead of time. <laughs> All right, so this was a proof of concept. And while I won't know exactly until that air crete is cured, and that's gonna take about 28 days to know for sure if I got the right ratio of foam out of here. But based on what I've seen before in my experience, I got the same kind of foam, I got the same kind of air crete mix. So I'm gonna say this is a viable option to use an old tire instead of an air compressor to make air crete. I'm gonna keep experimenting with this and maybe up the pressure some more on the tire and see if it makes a difference. But I am happy with how this worked. If you're interested in giving AirCrete a try, you can make Franken foam for about 30 bucks, 30 to $35, depending on all the fittings. And I've actually got plans for that, but it's pretty easy to follow along in the video. I'll put a link to that video in the description and it'll be at the end of this video as well. I'll also link in the description the parts that I use to make the connection between the tire and the air inlet in Frankenfoam. Whew. That was fun. The air creep process is always kind of frenetic because you got a limited amount of time to get stuff in the forms and I always seem to not make enough. <laughs> I actually had to use some from the base form to put it in the, the ring form, but I think it's gonna be okay. What you're seeing in that project is a prototype for a tabletop fire pit that I wanna give a try. More on that project in a future video. Thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save little green by doing it yourself. You'll save a lot of money by making your own air creep. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.